Institute of Zahra Espiritu and the Chapter Officers, I'd like to welcome you, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome all participants from Zaho, Koya, Kuma, and other Kedisan universities who have just participated with us in this scientific environment. Mm, uh, secondly, I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to express my gratitude to Kak Heman and Kak Ahmed who have worked together uh, with us and for their great efforts and collaboration with us uh, for preparing this training course. Uh, finally, uh, Dr. Kemen, the director of this training course, uh, is the drilling supervisor of, H uh, of HK and Company. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I'm going to take your time, uh, Kevin, you can go ahead with your deep explanation and accurate, uh, clarification. I'm just going to mute the others. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, thanks, Mohammed, and thanks, Ahmed, for arranging this uh, online course. Uh, like uh, Mohammed introduced me, my name is Heman, and I currently work for Edgekin as a drilling supervisor. I have been in the drilling industry for the last uh, seven and a half years. Um, and Muhammad said, uh, during this online meeting, please, if you uh, mute uh, your mic until we get to the discussion part after half an hour. So um, the course, obviously, is an online course. It's going to take three days. Each day, we have uh, roughly one hour and a half uh, of time. We are going to go through. Uh, drilling fundamentals uh, during that, uh, those uh, three days. So for the first day, and basically for the entire course agenda, we've got, uh, like I said, three days. The first day, I'm going to talk about the drilling operations and rig systems. And basically, these are only fundamentals of drilling. We are not going to go into the detailed drilling uh, operations and practices. So for today, uh, um, We've got uh, the first 30 minutes, we are gonna, like I said, uh, discuss the drilling operations and uh, rig systems overall, and then we are gonna have a 10 minute uh, discussion, and then we're gonna have a 10 minute break, and then we are, we are gonna do the same thing for the second part, which is another 40 minutes. Okay, and then for the second day, I'm gonna discuss uh, with you guys uh, drilling fluids, casing and cementing operations. And then on the last day, we are going to talk about drilling bits and the directional drilling. Okay, and like I said, for the first 30 minutes, we've got two parts of each day. Each part is uh, only 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we are going to have 10 minutes of discussion. And Mohammed uh, is going to arrange uh, how we are getting the questions uh, because it's basically online course. If everybody asks us, the questions at the same time, then it's going to be probably a noisy uh, meeting. So he's going to deal with that. So for now, um, we're going to discuss the overall of the drilling operations in the rig systems. Uh, basically, most of you know that uh, there are some criteria we decide uh, to drill in any area. And the main thing, okay, is there any anything? Okay. Um, the main thing in the very first step to, to, to decide to explore hydrocarbons in an area is based on the seismic uh, data. And then a part of that, as we have um, confidence regarding the, having hydrocarbons uh, subsurface in any area, then we are going to start drilling uh, a well in that area. And then after it's, uh, the, the, that's a, that um, phase of the drilling operation is called exploration phase. So during that phase, most of the time after each section, we drill and then we are going to load the, 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 the formations to see whether we have uh, potential uh, hydrocarbons or not. Okay, so uh, these are the, the, the main things we decide when and how we, we, we uh, drill and well for the first time in the area. Okay, so for today, you must be able, uh, after we finish this, uh, you must be able to explain the basic functions of the rigs and the rig systems. We have uh, some major uh, systems of the rig, and then we are going to go through them uh, uh, shortly. Okay. 
uh, well type classifications uh, we've got three types mainly three types of uh, of wells in terms of the, the, the time of the well being drilled okay the first uh, class is called wildcat or exploration wells the wildcat that means the first well you drill in any area i.e you don't have any offset data, you have not drilled any wells nearby, and you don't have the um, uh, formation data. So that's why we, we call the wildcat, or uh, formally most of the time we call it exploration wells. Okay, so this is wildcat. And then we have another phase of wells we drill is the appraisal wells. In another word, appraisal means assessment or evaluation wells. That means we you drill the exploration well or the uh, wildcat well, and then you have to appraise how much hydrocarbons uh, you have in that area and how much you can produce. Um, so this is uh, what we call appraisal wells. That means the second phase of the drilling. And then you have another class of the wells, uh, which is development wells. Development wells means you have drilled the exploration well and you've uh, produced hydrocarbons, uh, oil and gas, and now, you've drilled also the appraisal well. So you have a rough idea about how much hydrocarbons and how big your reservoir is in that area. So you're gonna start development wells. And in many aspects, the development wells are different than the uh, exploration wells or the wildcat wells and the appraisal wells. The, 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 the main difference uh, the, from the development wells is you, you've got offset data, you have a very good idea about what you are doing, and then the cost and time of the much shorter and, and, and less costly than the uh, appraisal and its exploration wells. So these are uh, the types of the wells. Okay, so we've got uh, rig types. Obviously, there are many types of rigs worldwide, but what we are focusing on this course. Uh, the drilling environment is different than the environment of other workplaces. It sometimes is similar to the military environment. It's a very tough environment and needs a, a lot of flexibility to live in that kind of environment. Okay, so land rigs, uh, most common type of rigs uh, because it's less costly than the offshore rigs or the sea rigs and it's easier to operate on the land rigs compared to the other types of, of rigs. And like I said, uh, in Kurdistan, we have only land rigs because we don't have any sea to operate in the sea. Okay, so in the land rigs, um, we've got some main parts of the mast or the derrick. As you see this tower, we call it mast or derrick, okay? So on the very top we have, if you have visited the rig sites, I'm pretty sure you have seen all these parts. So on the very top one is the crown block. And then in here we have the monkey board where the uh, Derek board or the Derek man stands here. We've got drilling lines, we have traveling block, and we have the mast, we have the view door, we have the pipe racks, and so on. And the best way to understand all these parts of the dirt in the mass is to visit the rig site. Okay, and uh, these are basically the parts, the main parts of the rotary rig. Okay, uh, drilling system, we rely on several systems to drill any particular well. Okay, we've got the hoisting system. Hoisting means moving up and down any equipment. And mainly the, the rig life is a very machinery and mechanical life. So you're dealing with uh, dozens of uh, machineries and most of them either hydraulical or the uh, mechanical equipment. So the hoisting system is one of the main systems 
which is uh, moving the equipment up and down. And then after that, uh, we've got the circulating system in the mud. Okay, we're going to discuss about this system as pipe part by part uh, shortly. Rotating system and drilling uh, string is another uh, main system on the rig. And then also we have the uh, power system. Okay. Um, drilling principle, like I said, one of the systems is the rotating uh, system. And then in here we have a bit, the, the principle of drilling, any, any drilling. You have the bit at uh, the very bottom uh, on the well, and then you can apply weight on to apply the or to transmit the weight on bit which we apply from the uh, from the rotary uh, the rig floor. And then we've got the drill string. The drill string nowadays is most I would say 80% of the rigs they have uh, three joints or three single joints of pipe. They are roughly about nine and a half uh, meters or 30 feet. Uh, they are made up together by the, uh, like I said, the mechanical equipment and the rig hands who are called the roughnecks or the floor men, okay? And then also we have a uh, string uh, rotation, which is in the past, in the old days, it was rotated by the rotary table. That means you have the table on the rig floor that was rotating the entire string. But nowadays, uh, majority of the rigs have the rotating system, what they call uh, top drive. So that means on the top, the top drive has the driving uh, drive shaft, and the top drive itself rotates the entire string. But like I said, in the past, they, they used to use a, a rotary table in the Kelly and stuff like that to rotate the drill string. Uh, um, Is Kelly, like I said, which was different than the top drive. They used to drill a single of the pipe, and like I said, about nine and a half meters, drill down all the way. That that was uh, the only thing they were capable of. But nowadays, uh, with having the top drive, we can make three uh, singles together, and then they call a stand, and then we drill a stand down uh, fully without any connection. And then for the second stand, i.e., another three joints, which is already made up. Then we, we drill down again, okay? And then when we, uh, it doesn't matter with the top drive system or the Kelly system, we are able to pull. If we drill to the section TD or we have to pull out for any reason, then we are able to pull uh, three joints together. That means a stand, and then we rack it back in here on the mask, you see the, the mask cursor. Um, that's about the how we drill and how we make up the stand. And then we have the mud, which is uh, circulating through the drill string and then comes out through the uh, annulus back to the mud system. We are going to discuss this in detail, a little bit more detail also later on. And then uh, we have uh, the mud, which is carrying out the cuttings to the surface. And the mud has uh, several functions. And then we are going to discuss those as well later. Okay, um, like I said, one of the rig system is the hoisting system. And here we have the draw work. So from here we have the spool, which is uh, storing the drilling line all the way from the, to the uh, dead line. And then this line goes to here and then to the fast line and then to the uh, travel block in here. And then this movement while drilling or pulling or rain hole in many operations this equipment are going up and down, and that's what they call a hoisting uh, system. Uh, drilling process, uh, I move in to here. Okay. Like I said, with having Kelly, you can drill only the Kelly length, which is in here only a single. That means about nine and a half meters. Okay, but when we pull out of hole, we can pull uh, three singles together and then rack them back. As you see, these stands, they are, each stand is three singles, one, two, and three in, in the rig hands or the floor men, they rack them back. That, that's the basic uh, operation. Okay, another system as we discussed is the separating system. 
The circulating system, basically, you have the water pits in here, just be, uh, behind the uh, mud tanks, and then you can transfer water from here to the mud tanks. You have a few tanks just uh, designated for storing water in here. They are called water tanks, active tanks, whatsoever. And then you can mix mud or drilling fluid in here. And then you have the mud pumps with a suction line and discharge line. You can suck the mud from here and then discharge it and then pump it down all the way through here, uh, through the goosenecks and the Kelly hood. And then if you have the top drive or the, to the drilling string, from the drilling string inside the hole, it comes out from the bit nozzles to the annulus, and then from the annulus comes back to the top of the BOP with the flow line, and then from the flow line it comes back to uh, the mass system again. So this system is continuously running uh, while drilling, and sometimes while running holes, sometimes while pulling out, and for many other operations. This system, and it's recycling all the time, like I said. It's going, mud is going out and coming back to the same system. But um, there's one thing in here, when the mud is coming out, uh, like uh, we said, it cures cutting, so it's not a pure mud. So you have a solid control system on the mud tanks. You can filtrate them the same mud. You get rid of any particles. It may be in the mud, and then the pure mud, almost the pure mud comes back to the tanks, and then through the mud pump, you pump down the hole again. So this cycle or this circulation is continuously going on uh, while drilling in many other operations. Uh, we have uh, two rotating systems. We have Kelly, and like I said, this is a very, uh, not a very probably three decades ago, they, they used to use Kelly. And nowadays in rare uh, operations, they use Kelly in rare uh, companies. They use Kelly system. And the Kelly, uh, you have uh, Kelly versus the top drive. The Kelly is uh, less, efficient than the top drive in many ways. First of all, you can drill down only a single, while with the top drive, you can drill down three singles at the same time, which is called stand. And then with the kill, you have to rotate only in here, if you can see the rotary table for making any hole to drill down, or any other operation, if it's required to rotate, you have to rotate the rotary table. While with the top drive, you can rotate the top drive itself. That means from the top. And then many other uh, advantages of the top drive over the Kelly. But this is a, an overview about the Kelly, which is one of the rotating system. Um, the rotating system, like I said, we have the rotary table. This is a Kelly, and this is the Kelly bushing. You have to rotate the table if you have to rotate for drilling for, or any other operations. So, um, and also, like I said, you can drill down only a single uh, with the Kelly. Uh, sometimes with the Kelly, if you have the downhole motor, what uh, they call also mud motor, you can rely on the motor to achieve the rotation on the bed, but the motor can rotate only the tools which is below the motor. And this is mainly used for the directional uh, purposes. Uh, if you see these are uh, real pictures, this is the hand slips and this is the rotary table. Uh, the rotary table we discussed, it's responsible for rotating the entire string if you have the Kelly system. We also have a tool which is called the hand slips. As you see, these uh, three gentlemen are holding these hand slips. The hand slips are responsible for holding or hanging the entire drill string when you disconnect the top drive or the Kelly and you are trying to make another stand or you are trying to break out a connection in here because you have to have something to hang all the pipe uh, and that's done by the slips and then you can disconnect or connect any connection about the slips. So these are the hand slips. Uh, like I said, 
another system, rotating system versus the Kelly system is the top drive. Nowadays, most of the operations, most of the companies are using the top drive. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, some of you have seen the Schlumberger 10 CDs where you can see and you can learn about how the top drive works and what are the advantages of, of the top drive over the Kelly system. But I'm going to go through basic things of the top drive. And top drive in here, you have a motor, a huge motor, which is most of the time hydraulically operated. You can drive or you can uh, rotate the drive shaft hydraulically. And then you can rotate the entire drilling system all the way to the bit just by the top drive. So in this case, with the top drive, you don't need to rotate the rotate table. And then also you can uh, make up and drill a full stand. That means three joints together, not only one. Um, drill string components. Basically, um, we have for any drilling operations, obviously we need to have a drilling bit. And this is from the bottom. We have the drilling bit and then we, uh, the second part of today's uh, um, course is going to be talking about the drilling bits a little bit more in detail. So from the bottom, we have the drilling bit. and It has uh, various uh, sizes and types and stuff like that we are going to discuss. And then you have the drill colors. The drill colors are usually different connection than the, the, um, the uh, drill pipes. And it's different shape and it's more robust, uh, more durable, because the drill collars are responsible for transmitting and transferring the weight, which you apply from the surface all the way to the bit. And then we also have some other uh, components in the drill string, which is called BHA. We have the stabilizers. Usually the stabilizers are used to keep the verticality of the hole. If you want to drill an, any vertical hole, a straight hole, the stabilizers will help you to straighten or uh, keep the, 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 the hole uh, vertical. And a part of that, the stabilizers can be used also for the directional uh, drilling purposes. For example, you have um, a hole which is designed to drill vertical and then deviate like this. And then uh, after deviation, for example, the plan is to reach 35 degree and then keep the 35 degree. If you want to keep that 35 degree, no more directional work, no more directional plan, then the stabilizers uh, will help you to keep the hole in the desired direction. And then also you have the drill pipe and uh, the drill pipe is responsible for transmitting the torque because you are applying the torque. Torque basically is force, but a rotational force. Uh, any force, any straight force, straight direction, uh, that, that's a uh, normal force. But if you apply rotation while you're applying any force, that's called torque. So this drill pipe is responsible for transmitting the torque down to the bit and also to facilitate the circulation. Because like we said, you are pumping the mud down the drill pipe and then comes back to the surface through the annulus. And then the... The system, the drive systems, we have Kelly. Like I said, this is a very old uh, version, like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, that, that was common, but now this is very rare. And then you have the top drive, which is also rotating the, the drill string in the bit from the surface. And then you have another tool which can generate any rotation on the bit, and that is a downhole motor. Uh, the downhole motor, as we discussed, it's giving you the rotation by, uh, by the flow. As you start pumping, it has a stator and rotor inside that generates the rotation on the bit. And everything below the motor uh, will start rotating uh, when you apply any rotation. Okay, so this, um, that was the, the first part. It's about more than half of today's uh, um, slides or pages, and then the second part of the after the break, uh, we we are going to discuss about the drilling bits 
a little bit uh, more in detail. But for now, we have 10 minutes of discussion. If anybody uh, has any question, yeah. Muhammad will arrange that and then we can uh, take yeah. the questions. Uh, thank you for this informative seminar. Um, actually, uh, only 10 minutes left for uh, questions. So guys, whatever question you have, you can ask him, uh, but please specify your question and shorten it without comments, uh, without long comments. So uh, the time is limited and uh, the participants uh, may ask many questions. So whatever question you have, you can ask him. Any question? Okay. Uh, hello. Hello, yes. Mr. Ima, thank uh, before anything, thank you for your supply. And just I have a question about the circulating system and especially about the material that are used. After this material back to the uh, uh, plus what started from it, any change will happen uh, to this material? Uh, yes, basically the what they call solid control, which is consists of uh, the sander, the silter, uh, centrifuges, hydrocyclones, all those stuff, they cannot 100% purify the, uh, the mud. That means the mud in, which is going inside the hole, when it comes out, even though it's passing through all those uh, equipments, but it's, uh, there, there will be some change in the materials in the mud uh, way, uh, uh, absolutely. Most of the time, especially if you have a high ROP, that means a fast drilling, you are getting a lot of cuttings back to the shield shakers and to the um, uh, solid control equipment. You have cuttings or small, very small particles in the mud. That means one of the changes is most of the time the mud which is coming out is higher in terms of weight. It's higher than the mud which is going in. For example, if you are pumping 8.8, .8 mud weight inside the hole, when it's coming out, it's probably 8.9 or 9 ppg. And then if you have the full circulation, most of the time the mud engineer is diluting the mud when it's coming out. And also the, the, the rheology can change, but most of the time the weight is changing when it's coming out. Exactly, it's clear, thank you. Okay, well. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other question you have, guys? Any question you can ask? Um, just uh, because we have this uh, 10 minutes and the question is, doesn't have to be only within the, 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 the topic or it doesn't have to be very fundamental because we've got 10 minutes now. If anybody has a more detailed question, uh, is welcome to be answered. So it doesn't uh, have to actually, be only about, about what we discussed now. Uh, I came and actually have a question about drilling fluid. Um, yes. Sometimes, for example, if you want to change its properties, for example, viscosity and density, uh, okay. as we know, our density and viscosity have uh, a proportional relationship with each other. For, for, uh, so, for example, if you want to uh, remain density constant, mod density constant at the desired depth, and we want to change its viscosity only, so just uh, making a property constant and the other one uh, changeable. So how we can do that yeah. by adding that yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay, um, th that's a good question, but a correction for your, uh, for your question is the material which are used to raise the mud weight are not the same material uh, for the uh, Viscosity, and we have another term we call a rheology. A rheology is wider uh, than the viscosity because when we say viscosity is only viscosity, but when we say rheology, that means viscosity, gel strength, uh, yield point, all those stuff. Uh, the material we are using for increasing the weight is not proportionally the same thing for the viscosity. So you can increase the mud weight or decrease with maintaining the viscosity or the rheology at the same value as per the plan. So, for example, we are using barite mainly in the top section, in the very sections of the hole, for raising the mud weight. But the barite doesn't increase the rheology. And we have bentonite, we can add it to the mud system, it will increase the rheology or the viscosity, but it doesn't increase 
the Madrid at all. So you have that option, the full option, anytime while drilling to maintain the weight and increase the or decrease the viscosity, and vice versa. You can decrease. Uh, and Chairman, increase another question. Uh, uh, a question about it. Um, actually. Uh, uh, previously, uh, most of oil companies that were using barite to uh, increase the viscosity, but due to some scientific research which had been uh, published, uh, they have just uh, clarified that barite can make metal-to-metal -metal contact under pressure. That's why, what do you use for, incre uh, for increasing and or decreasing mm -hmm. uh, viscosity, or even especially in the uh, rheology? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it depends on the company's uh, policy, and the main thing is it depends on the lessons learned while drilling the offset wells. If you, for example, in HKM, we are drilling the development wells nowadays, right? So we have a bunch of data uh, which material can be used to, to increase the viscosity or decrease the viscosity. And same thing for the weight. Nowadays, for example, Ahmed knows uh, because he's been with us. Uh, we don't use the barite and bentonite to increase the mud weight or the viscosity. We have some other materials which are truzan, uh, trupak, all those. They are basically the, the viscofiers. Okay, this is regarding the viscosity. And for the weight, we are using some salt like KCl, NaCl. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3, all those materials we are using because we know uh, from the offset wells, from the drilled wells, that these materials are the best for keeping the mud properties in our desire. So it depends on the company's policy. Uh, a study can be done on a specific well. This is what I mean. Uh, thank you, Kak Kemen. Uh, any other question you have? If it's possible. Yeah, I have one question. Mm. Okay. Okay. But please, how many time have left? Uh, how much time have you? Sorry. Uh, we've got eight more minutes so far. Uh, eight more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that uh, Abdul Salam? Uh, yeah, Mr. Danisbar. Well, you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Heman, for your impressive presentation. Even in Turkish, uh, Mr. Danisbar, well, no problem. Okay. Uh, do you have my voice? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Your Thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Uh, You're welcome. Can you tell us about the common problem ha happened in the drilling site, like hydrostatic pressure or others, or reducing the mud? Which one of the problem drilling problems uh, do you have faced on? Can you tell us about? Yes. The HKN? Yes. yes. Okay. This is another good question. Um, the drilling challenges or the hazards or the problems during drilling vary from a well to another, from an area to another, from a block to another, from a country to another. But I can talk about uh, HKN. Uh, the HKN wells, when we drill, one of the biggest issues we are drilling is loss of circulation. That means uh, we discussed about the circulating system, how it comes from the mud tanks to the pump, and then we pump down the hole. But our formations are on the fractures, uh, big vagues and fractures, and the mud cannot return back to the surface. It just goes to the formation because the, fra the, the formations are fractured and there are caves, basically. So this is one of the uh, main issues or constant issues we are facing while drilling wells in HKN. And then we have another problem is the pipe uh, sticking. While we are drilling many times, that uh, it has happened that the pipe, PHA, gets stuck. That means you lose your rotation, you lose your probably the circulation, and you cannot come out of hole and you cannot go down either. That means you are stuck. And many times we end up severing or cutting uh, the, the pipe uh, below the stuck point or or... Uh, any any point that's desired. So the, the one of the issues we are facing is the loss of circulation and also the stuck pipe. And there are some other cases, uh, but they are not major cases like uh, directional control because nowadays most of the companies are using the deviated wells. They are drilling directionally, not a vertical hole. And when we get uh, on the third day, we are going to discuss the reasons why 